All forgotten yesterdays School days remind me of When I was a boy All my life I've been this lonely Graham Kaicho, a tiny object of complete mystery thrust into the world of wrestling under the promise of a Nintendo DS. Her age, her birthplace, her height, her weight, her real name, even the actual circumstances of her debut, all a mystery. She was born into the Triple Six wrestling promotion known as the Wrestling of Darkness and was the child of the Undertaker, a tiny, tiny demon child of pure evil, the chairman. Her and Riho were the youngest at the time and even wrestled each other. But while Riho would go on to continue wrestling, Ram got bored of it. She left wrestling in her teens altogether and that was that. But one day, she returned from her self-imposed exile. And didn't change a single thing about herself. Still the chairman. Oh, Ram Kaicho is the true little demon. No, she's a tiny demon of evil cuteness. Someone who runs around the ring cursing at wrestlers like you son of a bitch fucking little just one of a fucking jump bitch. According to that bastard Chris Brooks and flips fuckers off. She's a menace, a true goblin. Someone armed with invisible shurikens and ectoplasm. Someone who is strictly known for being a character and is quite hilarious on her own. Someone with amazing merch design, the best t-shirts on the planet. I'm serious, these t-shirts rock, but still capable of delivering in the ring. She brings the sunshine to a rainy afternoon. She puts the sweetness and stares it with a spoon. She watches for my as she is quick and nimble and oh so tiny that she can be thrown around everywhere. She's a chairman, damn it. Look at her amazing fashion sense. She knows just what to say. Ram Kaicho is the coolest wrestler on the planet. Fuck you, it's true. Not just from a character focused point of view and theatrical sense that I love about wrestling oh so much, but from an avant-garde artsy point of view. As one of the main hurdles to making a video on Ram Kaicho was the complete mystery of what to talk about beyond this particular point of this essay. And whether or not there's actual W in her name or not, whether it's Kai Chow or Kai Cho. Chris Brooks says Kai Chow, but he's British. Everyone else says Kai Cho. I don't know. But then I learned she was a huge film buff. But in particular, of Buffalo 66. And that was it. From that point on, I found an understanding of Ram Kai Cho. What is Buffalo 66? Buffalo 66 is a 1998 American independent art film written, produced, directed, composed, and starring Vincent Gallo and Christina Ricci. Back then, when you heard someone had their name in all the credits, the assumption was pretentious director, and that's the image that has stayed with Vincent Gallo his entire career. We'll get to Gallo in a second, as it's important to understand a bit about this man, but Buffalo 66 was well received by the filmmaking audience, but wasn't influential by any means. My rewatch changed my opinion as I found it to be such a good looking film to me. The film stock choice, the lighting, the colors that Gallo couldn't color correct because of the film stock choice. It's such a look and I love it. Christina Ricci over everyone else looks timeless. Take any still of Ricci in this film and it looks like a vintage photograph. She looks iconic and classy. Whenever you see film montages of classic film photography, Buffalo 66 needs to be featured 
needed more. It's unique in this sense. The film is about Billy Brown, who was just released from prison for reasons, who has been lying to his parents for the past five years that he has a government job and wants to visit for dinner, but ends up in a situation where he has to bring his fake wife over. So he kidnaps Christina Ritchie and forces her to be his wife for the visit. The film has a subtle, surreal, and symbolic tone to it, and Billy is very much a pathetic character that Richie goes along with the act. We see his parents, and we immediately understand why Billy is the way he is. There's a definitive ticking clock element to the film as Billy's actual motives involve something very, very bad. But the point of the film is exploring the romantic notion of love, providing meaning to anyone, and the deprived, pathetic character of Billy is used to make this point. In modern terms, Buffalo 66 is about an incel, how he was nurtured into one by his environment and family, and how love can truly affect one. It's optimistic, it's romantic, very romantic, more romantic than I remember it being, and there's very little physical activity, not even an implied. In short, Buffalo 66 is beautiful, subtly comedic, subtly very, very dark, and towing the line between surreal and real, with little musical breaks in between. As a standalone art film, it works so, so well. However, once you learn about Vincent Gallo, you could see why it was passed over eventually. Vincent Gallo is quite frankly a New York artist from the 70s in every way possible. He was mostly a successful painter and musician before acting and working as a director. He has made two films the public can see, the first being Buffalo 66. He is known for being abrasive and quite frankly an asshole. According to film lore, he would argue with Christina Ritchie on set of the film and Ritchie, then 17, was unused to such a volatile director but understood that this was probably his weird eccentric way to get her to do certain scenes and to get into character which I can see in the final product but ultimately stopped talking to completely after hearing Gallo call her fat after the film was done. Gallo would later say this was made in jest and taken out of context and would refute having a terrible time with Richie on set despite calling her a cunt. He would later direct The Brown Bunny that is infamous for being the exact film people think of when they hear the word pretentious director. On paper, it certainly sounds like it. Like, if I sat you down with a cup of coffee or tea, maybe a little cream in the Earl Grey or a donut on the side and went, Today, friend, we are watching the film of one Vincent Gallo. Written by Vincent Gallo, directed by Vincent Gallo, edited by Vincent Gallo, produced by Vincent Gallo, composed by Vincent Gallo, and starring just Vincent Gallo for a long period of driving down dirt roads until he meets up with infamous indie darling Chloe Savini, who gives Vincent Gallo a full, unsimulated blowjob on camera from start to finish. Yes, finish. And then, to promote the film, Vincent Gallo paid to have a giant billboard of the still image of the unsimulated fellatio Chloe Savini gave him. In short, he made a film and forced art critics to look at his dick. You would probably nod your head and go, Well, that's the most pretentious thing I've ever heard. Well, honey, I gotta tell you about Harmony Corinne one day. The Brown Bunny was infamously derided at Cannes when it debuted. Like, from the moment the credits started to the very end, it was heckled and booed. It made the late Roger Ebert so mad, he called it the worst film to ever show at Cannes, to which Gallo would respond by wishing Ebert with cancer, to which Ebert famously replied, a colonoscopy would be more entertaining to watch than the Brown Bunny. Hello. Gallo would also have a website that at one time sold his sperm in a vial for one million dollars for in vitro purposes. You can also rent his services for one night. Hmm. 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 The best description of his entire career is summarized by a movie review of his music video he randomly directed for J-Rock Legends, Lay Ark and Cells, An Enemy, which is ironically enough, my favorite Lay Ark song, I mean, Hyde, is just so divine. So
but the review it was all like Music video for the arcade sale, a Japanese band I didn't know before, oh my, the intro is mysterious, intriguing, a man in a futuristic world, waters and an enemy, is it connected to the song, should I translate the lyrics, please, please translate, please, please do it, after that, unfortunately, it evolves into an ordinary live performance record, oh, it's a shame, it's a shame, so Gallo is an asshole in real life, so what's great about his art? Because Gallo is not holy without self-awareness. He said about his art that he wishes his art to stand alone and to be more intelligent and thoughtful than he is himself. It's a case of art over the artist because the artist is often just a conduit using life experiences and perspectives to mold the inspired idea into a final product. Vincent Gallo didn't stop making art, but he stopped making it for the public, becoming freer in his art in ways that has to be relatable to everyone who makes art for themselves. For all amateurs who paint or make music, and the only ones who see it are their friends and family. Vincent Gallo's third film was made with the late Sage Stallone and Gallo showed it twice in public at his request and then has never shown it since. It's been over 23 years at this point. He apparently did the same with a new feature that no one in the public has ever seen. He also hasn't acted since recently actually for a Daily Wire feature actually. So like oh, Ben Shapiro, oh my god this guy. It's the idea of making art for the purest sake of making it. Not to make money, or to be adored, or to be seen even, but for pure self-expression, and for the people it was made for. It's very much like this event a channel follower showed me. Destroy your art. To make art, show it off to an audience, and destroy it right there and then. With this year showcasing four short films before they are destroyed, you might think, what a waste. But but it's about the moment, the experience, the impermanence of life. Like mandala art in the sand before the tide wipes it away. The beauty is in the art of making it, witnessing it, taking it in, and then destroying it. This is where the artistic philosophies come full circle and relate to one Ram Kaicho. Ram admittedly stole Christina Ricci's hair from the film, but it extends further to why they make art. Ram Kaicho's performances in her home promotion of Triple Six are made for the audience only. They are oh so rarely streamed and kept online, and if they are, Ram's match is certainly not. Her artwork was not made for a wider audience, and she wanted to stay that way, knowing fully it's not an optimal way of being a modern pro wrestler in the digital landscape. But even Ram Kaicho would admit that she doesn't even consider herself a wrestler. In my opinion, Ram Kaicho treats wrestling like how I view it. Pure theater. Yeah, she can run the ropes really well and hit some nice cross bodies, but her whole act is being this character and providing a different, unique type of wrestling. For Triple Six, it's art made for the live attending audience alone. For any other appearances, it's about being Ram Kaicho. There are so few wrestlers out in the world where you can answer the question, what is their style with their name? Ram Kaicho's style is Ram Kaicho. Her style of storytelling is strictly Ram Kaicho. A story written, directed, performed, and structured by Ram Kaicho. What is this story? Well, it's a romantic one. The love story of Ram Kaicho and Raku. Raku is the god in the yellow dress, someone who is so pretty, she's so pretty. That sundress is also elegant and iconic, her voice is the kindest you'll hear, which is why she can put people asleep. She will sing you to a nice slumber, oh, and she loves trains. Raku is one of the easiest characters to understand, yellow dress, smiles, soft spoken, huge 
huge, huge, huge sense of urgency. If you don't like Raku, one, how dare you? Two, we do not like the same type of wrestling. Ram Kaicho is the opposite of Raku. She comes from the Triple Six promotion, the Wrestling of Darkness. She came from an underworld, underground, artsy, surreal wrestling place, and both Raku and Ram Kaicho fell in love. It was love that is mythic in nature. Like, seriously, creation stories start this way. You got God, and then you got the chairman of the underworld. Their union created the world as we see it, with all the kindness and evil and everything in between. But one day, Ram slighted God Raku and made her angry. Oh, look how angry she is. And they fought each other in the ring at TJPW. And while it seemed Ram was having fun at first, Raku was having none of it. Ram angered Raku, and now she's teaming with other people. How dare she? So Raku is so upset, she's going to sleep. And anyone in a relationship knows this feeling. Oh, but Raku is so cute sleeping that Ram can help and join her for a nap. But oh, Raku tricked Ram and is using her sleep magic on her and... Oh, shh. And now, Raku lays over Ram for the cover. One, two... Free Wi-Fi breaks it up, and oh, the train is departing, the train is departing. But now, Ram feels betrayed by Raku, and oh, for the seat to Raku. But wait, Ram cannot fight Raku, she can't fight her. Free Wi-Fi would offer her up again, but no, Ram doesn't want to fight. She's just like Billy Brown. I got a girl, alright? I got a girl. There's a girl who loves me, and she's very pretty. And she's very nice, and she loves me. She won't partake. Instead, fighting Yuki Aino with Lion Spirit, but for a third time, Ram and Raku cross paths and are unable to fight each other. But Raku takes a chance and hits a chop. Oh, another chop, and Ram grabs Raku, rip into the Ram Maker. Oh no, what has she done? Ram can't believe herself. Her actions helped her team, though, as Free Wi-Fi hit their tag finisher on Palm Harajuku for the victory. Ram won the match with her team, but at what cost? With no words exchanged, Raku leaves with her pillow in hand, and Ram is left alone. But she took matters in her hand. She announced a TJPW crossover with Triple Six at Corican Hall. Ram will team with Raku versus Palm Harajuku and Nakari Noah. Ram would then announce this as an engagement match with Raku. They will be married, love will win, they will be spanning time together. But this is not so easy of a story as Palm Harajuku turns into Dustin Hoffman pounding on the window of the church and the graduate and declares she knew Ram far longer than Raku has over a decade and that she loves her more. Ram has two people fighting over her, but Raku refuses to be that type of woman fighting over Ram and demands Ram win the match to prove her worth. Hikari Noah has also been a fan of Ram Kaicho over the years and has always run to work with her. Everybody loves Ram and the match at Triple Six started with a wedding march through the gates of death from God Raku and Ram Kaicho dressed as Chun-Li for some reason. <laughs> and Ram being extra vulgar and Palm being extra extra vulgar. Oh Palm, stop that Palm. A wedding cake slice even and then a train ride to the honeymoon, but nope. Hikari and Palm would team well together, keeping the couple at bay, but Palm would miss the Palm to justice, and Raku gives her a chop to the brain. Raku with the sling blade to Hikari, leaving Ram to do a 619, followed by a full Ray Mysterio West Coast pop from the top. Ram Kaicho would celebrate with her new wife with a kiss to the cheek. Aww. Raku's first kiss, too. In the end, we have a happy ending with a newlywed couple. A type of couple that's so in love where they can just sit together and span time. Out of all the stories Ram Kaicho, this tiny, tiny demon of vulgarity, could tell, she chose to tell a love story with a soft-spoken god in a yellow dress and culminated it in her home promotion. Whether intentional or not, the art philosophies of Vincent Gallo from a movie Ram Kaicho watched and loved enough to steal Christina Ricci's hair from parallels the general philosophies of Ram Kaicho's own sensibilities. 
art, not for the greater wrestling world. A world she barely considers herself to be a part of, but yet here she is, wrestling in a stardom ring, but for the purposes of art itself, to just make it, because that's what's gotta happen. We just gotta make art, not for consumption, not for the public, but for you and a tiny circle of people you made it for. Like this quote in I Am Non, a Japanese series about an artist making her first film. Self-display doesn't require an audience. The elusive nature of Ram Kaicho, adding that much more to the complete picture, and she's wonderful, a great addition to any card, and everyone knows it because you see her pop up randomly almost everywhere. And the great thing about her is I still have no idea what she's all about, <laughs> but she does have parallels to Billy Brown, as both were a product of their nurture, their environment, and their childhood. But she also shares symbolism with Layla, a bright light in a world of meaninglessness and cruelty. One who people cannot help but like. That's her. That's Ram Kaicho. That's the coolest wrestler on the planet and proof of how threads of art connect and inspire through generations across the world as Vincent Gallo will never watch this video and will never know a young girl was inspired by his movie he made in 1998 Buffalo, New York. In the end, some freaky kid uh, 500 years from now is going to rent a videotape and it's going to be Buffalo 66 and he's going to go, he's going to go, yo, that Gallo guy is cool. I want to see, let's watch that again, you know, and maybe 10 years after that he's going to do something and he's going to remember or be inspired or liberated by or have a new piece of language to, to, to continue his life forward. I'm comfortable with that. Ooh. Take care, y'all.